Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I carried out the final assembly of my 3D RGB LED cube. I will take the base that I made in the previous video. I'll be adding the 8x8 RGB LED panels, 16 horizontal anode link wires that I also showed you how to make in the previous video, and 8 vertical anode link wires that I'll show you how to make in this video. And I'll put them all together so that we ultimately end up with a cube that looks like this. So to get started, I take the first 8x8 panel and present it at a slight angle. This enables me to insert each of the wires into its associated PCB hole one at a time, and I use a pair of long nose pliers to help guide the wires into the holes. I then take a thin strip of wood, in fact it's a piece of pine that's one inch tall, and I use this to set the height of the 8x8 panel. I then use an engineer's set square to make sure that the panel is perpendicular to the base. I then solder the two outermost green cathode wires to stabilise the panel. But I did have to reheat the joints to make sure that the panel was actually set perpendicular. Next I solder the remaining green cathode wires. The wooden spacer is removed so that the red and blue cathodes can be soldered and when doing a lot of soldering I use a fume extractor where possible. And one final check to make sure the panel is perpendicular. The base is then inverted so I can trim away the excess wire from underneath. I then use some solvent and a long cotton bud to clean away the flux residue and I did this after each panel was fitted. The exact process is repeated for the second panel. Insert the wooden spacer, check the panel is perpendicular, solder two of the outer cathodes, and fine tune the alignment to the first panel. and solder the remaining joints. I made a wooden cradle to hold the base while it's inverted and this is to try and help protect the panels during construction and beyond. I will be making a PDF file available for download on the EE Times website and this will include drawings for all the jigs including the cradle. As soon as the PDF file has been published I will post links to it in the descriptions of all associated videos. The installation of panels 3 and 4 is pretty much the same as panels 1 and 2, with the exception that I used the horizontal anode link wires to maintain spacing at the top of the panels. It was after setting the fourth panel that I realised that the alignment between all the panels wasn't as good as it could be and that my installation method was slightly flawed and a different method for aligning the tops of the panels was needed. It then dawned on me that I had the perfect solution all along. I just wish I'd realised it sooner. I took one of my old base PCBs, in fact it was a scrap one, and drilled out the green cathode pads to 5.5mm. This gave me the benefit of an 8x8 grid on a perfect 1 inch pitch which I could use as a jig for aligning the rest of the panels. The next task is to install the 16 horizontal anode link wires, which provide electrical connectivity between the anode rails and provide the cube with additional rigidity. There's only 8 wires required to provide the electrical connections, but I've actually used 8 on each side just to make the cube look symmetrical. Just like the LED leads, the anode link wires actually have loops in them, and these fit snugly onto the anode rails. This provides a nice electrical connection as well as a mechanical one. 
I will admit that these link wires aren't actually the best looking thing in the world, but even though they detract from the cube's overall aesthetics, they do provide an important function. Well that concludes the installation of the horizontal link wires, I now need to make and install the eight vertical anode link wires. So let's start with the making of them, and this requires another jig. The jig is quite simple, it uses some off-cut MDF skirting board with two 1mm drills sunk into it spaced 15 30 seconds of an inch apart. It also has some markings on it to show where to cut each wire to length. I took some pre-straightened 20 gauge tin copper wire trapped and twisted it around the two drills to form an L shape with a loop in the short end. The wire is then cut to the required length and the loop trimmed to form a hook. Eight wires are required, seven of them with an L shape and one short straight one with a hook on one end. And each wire is one inch shorter than the previous one. Here you can see the eight link wires and the eight anode pads to which they will be soldered into. When I first tried to fit these wires in, they flopped around and it was like I needed a third hand to hold them in place while I soldered them. What I did was get some masking tape and apply a short length of it across the two adjacent cathodes, the sticky side facing away. The tension of the tape and the friction on the non-sticky side was enough to hold the link wire in place while soldering. Here you can see a close-up of one of the L-shaped link wire solder joints. The same piece of tape was used on all seven L-shaped link wires. What I actually like about the way I've installed these wires is that they don't stick out in any way, but fit snugly between the adjacent cathode wires and are therefore almost invisible. The last link wire, which is the straight one, didn't actually need a piece of tape. And there you have it. The cube is now fully assembled and ready for testing, which is the subject matter for an upcoming video and blog. In my next video, I'll be showing you how to replace a blown LED. Believe it or not, I've actually had quite a few of them die on me.